This show is a part of the podcast network of the Walled Garden Philosophical Society, an international community of philosophers and seekers dedicated to the pursuit of truth, wisdom, virtue, and the divine, wherever they may be found. To find out more, go to thewalledgarden.com. Hello and welcome to Soul Searching with Seneca. Today we're finally moving on to letter number 25 on Reformation. And uh, this is just a brief letter. It's only about seven verses long, about a page and a half. So I think we might be able to go through the whole thing today. Uh, But nonetheless, to give you a little bit of uh, context before we dive in, because the letter is somewhat confusing when you jump straight into it, uh, in that uh, he kind of begins a thought about something that he's dealing with in his current life uh, without really giving us much context for what's really happening. Uh, He's dealing with two people uh, in the notes of this book. It says that there's one older and one younger. Uh, Perhaps there was something going on between them. Perhaps there's some sort of uh, challenge that they're facing morally, ethically, and Seneca is intervening and trying to help the situation out. So he begins by kind of talking about, well, what are we, what, what, what should we do with these, uh, these two characters? And so uh, that's a little bit of context and not that it gives you much to deal with, uh, but it will help you when I start reading. So nonetheless, let's just go through and, uh, and start reading and maybe we'll stop along the way when I think that there's something that we need to uh, pause and, and, and take a lesson out of. So he says, quote, With regard to these two friends of ours, we must proceed along different lines. The faults of the one are to be corrected, the others are to be crushed out. I shall take every liberty, for I do not love this one if I am unwilling to hurt his feelings. What, you say, do you expect to keep a forty-year-old ward under your tutelage? Consider his age, how hardened it now is, and past handling. Such a man cannot be reshaped, only young minds are moulded. I do not know whether I shall make progress but I should prefer to lack success than to lack faith. You need not despair of curing sick men, even when the disease is chronic, if only you hold out against excess and force them to do and submit to many things against their will. As regards to our friend, I am not sufficiently confident either, except for the fact that he still has sense of shame enough to blush for his sins. This modesty should be fostered. So long as it endures in his soul, there is some room for hope. But as for this veteran of yours, I think we should deal more carefully with him, that he may not become desperate about himself. There is no better time to approach him than now, when he has an interval of rest and seems like one who has corrected his faults. Others have been cheated by this interval of virtue on his part, but he does not cheat me. I feel sure that these faults will return, as it were, with compound interest, for just now, I am certain, they are in abeyance but not absent. I shall devote some time to the matter and try to see whether or not something can be done. End quote. All right, so let's pause there for a moment and take a look at what we can learn about Seneca's philosophy of reformation. You know, starting with the fact that what we're dealing with here is a moral reformation or a reforming, right, of the moral landscape of these two individuals that Seneca is talking about. One young, one old, and he's kind of saying, well, how do we deal with these people? How should we go about this process of reforming these people? Uh, And so, you know, there's a few things that we can learn straight from the start. Firstly, I love that he says, I do not love this one if I am unwilling to hurt his feelings, right? Seneca has this kind of approach of, uh, obviously, if if we're going to actually fix somebody here, if they've got some moral issues going on and they want to change, uh, I'm not in there to not hurt their feelings. I'm not in there to be nice to them. I'm in there to help them to reform themselves, right? And if I truly love a person, perhaps I'm going to have to say some things or uh, do some things with them that they don't particularly like, but are still doing that out of love, right? It's, it's, it's an interesting point that he makes. 
And he then goes on to kind of ask the question like he so often does that he might hear the reader asking, you know, what are you going to do with this older guy? You know, it's a, it's going to be so hard. He's so old. You know, he's already stuck in his ways. What's the point, right? And then Seneca says something very interesting that I, I've often taken out of context because it's generally a great quote for uh, living your life. But he says, I do not know whether I shall make progress, but I should prefer to lack success rather than to lack faith. And as I said, I think that this is generally a really great way to live your life as well. Uh, But nonetheless, in this, you know, Seneca's philosophy of reformation, this shows us a real beautiful side of Seneca's character, which is that he actually believes that people can change, or at least he is saying that I would prefer to believe that people can change uh, rather than to not try in the first place. Right, So you can imagine that if Seneca was standing here by your side and trying to help you get through uh, whatever challenges you're trying to get through in your life or, or helping you to develop a greater sense of morality in, in the decisions that you make, uh, he's going to have faith in you and say, you know, let's really try this. Let's get in and get dirty because uh, I believe that you have the ability to do this. So it's kind of a nice quote. I like it. And next we get another sense of what Seneca might do if he was trying to reform somebody. And he said, You need not despair of curing a sick man, even when the disease is chronic. If only you hold out against excess and force them to do and submit to many things against their will. Okay, so here we get the sense that Seneca's approach to reforming somebody who might be uh, older or maybe stuck in their ways, somebody who is likely to return to their previous ways of being, uh, perhaps Seneca's approach is going to be kind of like, okay, let's try as hard as we can to keep them away from excess, right, and force them against their will to do the things that they know are right, And so with that kind of person, we get the sense that Seneca has a very aggressive approach here. Uh, But nonetheless, he goes on to talk about how the younger person still has uh, that, that kind of youthful blush. He says, as regards to our other friend, I'm not sufficiently confident either, except for the fact that he still has a sense of shame enough to blush for his sins. The modesty should be fostered so long as it endures in his soul, there is some room for hope. So Seneca obviously sees uh, this kind of blush, this sort of uh, uh, recognition of one's faults, recognition of one's sins uh, as a sign that progress is possible. And this is actually something that he's talked about before as well. Seneca has mentioned that uh, one of the first and best signs that you're making progress is when you actually admit uh, that there are things that you could be doing better, that there are things that you're actually messing up in. You know, this is actually something that I've kind of tried to incorporate into my coaching practice as well. One of the first things that I try to tell my clients is, hey, the the fact that you're actually sitting here seeking out some kind of uh, guidance, a hand to hold while you walk through some changes in your life, uh, the recognition that there are things that you might not be doing right in life that might be leading to uh, a certain dissatisfaction in in your soul, you know, that's amazing sign of progress. You need to actually give yourself, as Epictetus would have said, that self-kindness, right, to recognize uh, that there is something very important about that step of, of knowing. You know, don't they say the first step is knowing that you have a problem? It's a massive step, right? So Seneca thinks that that is something uh, worth highlighting and saying this is a sign that progress is very much still possible in terms of the reformation of somebody's character. And so then he goes on to say, But as for this veteran of yours, I think that we should deal more carefully with him, that he may not become desperate about himself. There is no better time to approach him than now, when he has an interval of rest, and seems like one who has corrected his faults. Others have been cheated by this interval of virtue on his part. But he does not cheat me. I feel sure that these faults will return, as it were, with compound interest. For just now, I am certain that they are in abeyance, but not absent. I shall devote some time to the matter and try to see whether or not something can be done. 
So what we see here is that Seneca is saying, listen, he's having a brief rest from all of his uh, moral sin, you might say. Uh, he's got a brief rest where he's got a little bit of virtue. He's corrected some of the issues in his character. Now is the time to strike. Now is the time to get in there and help him to truly find that reformation of his character, right? Uh, but he also nonetheless has, you know, he doesn't have this Pollyanna view as if, yeah, great, he's going to change and it's going to be amazing. No, Seneca recognizes that the sin still lurks, you know, the, the, the moral uncleanness still lurks within this person and will likely come back up again, right? And so, this is going to give Seneca the kind of right outlook when dealing with this person. The faith to go in there and say, this person can be reformed, they can change, and I can help them to do this, but nonetheless, the very realistic worldview that uh, people are very difficult to change, and likely this isn't going to be easy, and likely the problems that they have been dealing with in the past will very likely come back up to the surface again. So, uh, I kind of like Seneca's uh, view of this situation. You know, he's got a very realistic view, but nonetheless, one that gives him the faith in people to actually believe in them to change and to become better people. Uh, so, you know, there's a bit of push, there's a bit of pull, and and I really do like that about his his strategy here, uh, even though I don't necessarily know if the right way is to be forcing people against their will uh, to make certain decisions. Now, I know at the start of the episode, I kind of said, let's try and get through the whole letter. I think this is actually an appropriate place to finish this episode, because uh, he does go into something uh, that I think is appropriate to put into one single episode in, in, in the next few verses. Uh, but nonetheless, I really hope you've taken a few ideas away from this kind of uh, analysis of Seneca's theory or philosophy of reformation, and have a think about how these ideas relate to you. You know, the, the fact that you're listening to this show probably means that you're already at the stage where you're thinking deeply about uh, whether or not you're making the right moral choices in your life. Perhaps there are some habits that you want to change. Perhaps there's some guidance that you're seeking uh, for, you, you know, some of the issues that you're dealing with your, in your life. And perhaps this is a good sign and a good time to give yourself a little bit of kindness to recognize that you've already made so much progress by getting to this point already. And perhaps you might be in a state right now where you're making a lot of progress. Perhaps you're having what Seneca called here a bit of an interval, right? Uh, a bit of a brief holiday from uh, the weak points of your character. And perhaps this is a good reminder that those things still lurk. You know, they still exist within you uh, and not to allow yourself to get uh, too prideful in this uh, brief interval uh, so as to make it more likely that those old faults will find their way back into your character and into your life. So anyway, I'll leave it there and I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you in the next one.